The fluorescent lights flickered overhead as I entered the briefing room at the military base in Russia. The room was cold and sterile, with a large screen on one wall and a long table in the center. I had been summoned here along with my team of U.S. Army Rangers for a classified mission, and the secrecy surrounding it had us all on edge. I took a seat at the table, feeling the weight of my combat gear as I settled into the hard metal chair. My team filed in behind me, their faces grim and focused. Thompson, our weapon specialist, gave me a nod as he sat down beside me. Rollins, our sharpshooter, and Novak, our medic, took their places across the table. At precisely 0800 hours, a tall, stern-faced man in a crisp Russian military uniform entered the room. He had a presence that commanded attention, and the room fell silent as he took his place at the head of the table. Good morning, gentlemen, he began, his voice thick with a Russian accent. I am Colonel Dmitry Volkov, and I have called you here because we have a situation that requires your unique skills and expertise. He tapped a button on the table, and the screen on the wall flickered to life. It showed a map of the Ural Mountains, with a red circle highlighting a specific area. Three days ago, we lost contact with one of our military outposts near a remote cave system in the Urals, Volkov continued. We sent a team to investigate, but they too have gone silent. We suspect that something sinister is responsible for their disappearance. The map zoomed in on the highlighted area, revealing a sprawling network of caves and tunnels that seemed to go on for miles. Your mission is to travel to the outpost, assess the situation, and neutralize any threats you encounter, Volkov said, his gaze sweeping over each of us in turn. You will be working closely with a team of Russian Spetsnaz operatives who will provide support and guidance as needed. I glanced at my team, seeing the determination in their eyes. We were no strangers to dangerous missions, but something about this one felt different. The unknown nature of the threat, combined with the remote location and the involvement of Russian special forces, added an extra layer of complexity to an already challenging assignment. What do we know about the cave system? I asked, leaning forward in my seat. Very little, Volkov admitted. It is an ancient network of tunnels that has never been fully explored. Our geologists believe it may be home to undiscovered species of flora and fauna, but beyond that, we have no solid intelligence. I nodded, my mind already racing with possibilities. When do we leave? Immediately, Volkov replied. Your gear is being loaded onto a transport aircraft as we speak. You will be flown to a forward operating base near the Urals, where you will rendezvous with the Spetsnaz team and begin your mission. He slid a folder across the table to me. Here is all the information we have on the outpost and the surrounding area. Study it carefully and brief your team on the details. I took the folder and stood up, my team following suit. We won't let you down, Colonel. Volkov gave us a curt nod. See that you don't, Captain. The lives of our men may depend on it. With that, he turned and left the room, leaving us to prepare for the mission ahead. As we gathered our gear and made our way to the waiting transport, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were walking into something far more dangerous than anything we had faced before. The unknown nature of the threat, the remote location, and the involvement of Russian special forces all added up to a mission that would test our skills and our resolve to the limit. But we were army rangers, and we had a job to do. Whatever was waiting for us in those caves, we would face it head on and come out the other side stronger for it. At least, that's what I told myself as the transport lifted off and carried us into the heart of the Ural Mountains. The forward operating base was a hive of activity as our transport touched down on the rough tarmac. Russian soldiers hurried back and forth, loading gear and barking orders in their native tongue. The air was cold and crisp, with a biting wind that cut through even our thick combat fatigues. As we disembarked from the aircraft, a group of Spetsnaz operatives approached us. They were hard men, with weathered faces and eyes that had seen too much. Their leader, a tall, broad-shouldered man with a thick beard, stepped forward and extended his hand. Captain Donovan, he said in heavily accented English. I am Major Viktor Sokolov. My men and I will be accompanying you on this mission. I shook his hand firmly, noting the strength in his grip. Glad to have you with us, Major. What's the situation on the ground? Sokolov's face darkened. 
Not good, Captain. We lost contact with the outpost three days ago, and our initial recon team has not reported back. We fear the worst. I nodded grimly. Then we'd better get moving. The longer we wait, the worse it could get. We loaded our gear onto a pair of heavy-duty trucks and set off towards the outpost. The road was little more than a dirt track, winding its way through dense forests and over rocky terrain. As we bounced and jostled our way along, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. After several hours of driving, we finally arrived at the outpost. It was a small, fortified compound nestled in a clearing at the base of a towering cliff face. As we approached, I could see that something was wrong. The gates were smashed open, and there were signs of a violent struggle everywhere. We disembarked from the trucks and made our way into the compound, weapons at the ready. The scene that greeted us was one of utter carnage. Bodies lay strewn about, their limbs twisted at unnatural angles and their faces frozen in expressions of terror. Blood stained the ground and walls, and strange claw marks had gouged deep furrows into the metal and concrete. As we moved deeper into the compound, the sense of unease grew stronger. There was an eerie silence hanging over everything broken only by the occasional gust of wind or the crunch of our boots on the gravel. Suddenly, a movement caught my eye. I spun around, my rifle at the ready, only to see a figure stumbling out from behind a ruined building. It was a man, dressed in the tattered remains of a Russian military uniform. He was covered in blood and dirt, and his eyes were wide with fear. Dmitri! Sokolov called out lowering his weapon and rushing forward to catch the man as he collapsed. I hurried over, my team close behind. What happened here? I asked, kneeling down beside the injured soldier. Dimitri's eyes darted back and forth, as if searching for some unseen threat. It... it came from the caves, he stammered, his voice barely above a whisper. A monster. Like nothing I've ever seen before. It killed everyone. Tore them apart like they were nothing. I exchanged a glance with Sokolov, seeing the same grim realization in his eyes. Whatever had attacked the outpost was still out there, and it was our job to find it and eliminate it. Where are these caves? I asked, helping Dmitri to his feet. He pointed a shaking finger towards the cliff face. There. A network of tunnels and caverns that go deep into the mountain. That's where it came from. And that's where it returned to, after the slaughter. I turned to my team, seeing the determination in their eyes. Gear up, I said, my voice steady despite the fear gnawing at my gut. We're going in. As we made our way towards the cliff face, following the trail of destruction left by the creature, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were heading into something far more dangerous than anything we had ever faced before. But we were army rangers, and we had a job to do. Whatever was waiting for us in those caves, we would face it head-on and come out the other side stronger for it. At least, that's what I kept telling myself as we descended into the darkness, the unknown horrors of the mountain closing in around us like a suffocating shroud. The cave entrance loomed before us, a gaping maw of darkness that seemed to swallow all light and sound. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck standing up as we approached, my fingers tightening instinctively around the grip of my rifle. We paused at the entrance, checking our gear and making sure everyone was ready. I could see the tension in my team's faces, but also the determination. We had a job to do, and we would see it through no matter what. As we stepped into the cave, the temperature dropped suddenly, and the air became thick and heavy with the stench of decay. The darkness was almost tangible, pressing in on us from all sides. We switched on our flashlights, the beams cutting through the gloom like knives. The tunnels twisted and turned, leading us deeper into the mountain. The walls were slick with moisture, and strange, eerie shapes seemed to dance at the edges of our vision. Every sound was magnified, from the crunch of our boots on the rocky ground to the drip of water from the stalactites overhead. As we pressed deeper, the signs of the creature's passage became more obvious. Claw marks gouged the walls, and the bones of small animals littered the ground. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, my senses on high alert. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the tunnels. It was Thompson, 
we rushed towards the sound, only to find him being dragged away by a massive, shadowy figure. Rollins and Novak opened fire, but the creature seemed unfazed. With a sickening tear, it ripped Thompson's head from his body, then tossed his lifeless body aside. We retreated deeper into the cave, the creature's heavy footsteps echoing behind us. Our flashlights darted frantically, trying to catch a glimpse of our pursuer, but it seemed to melt into the shadows, always just out of reach. We emerged into a vast cavern, the walls glistening with moisture. In the center of the chamber was a lake of black, oily water, its surface dotted with the bones of countless victims. The stench of death was overpowering. The creature burst into the cavern, its eyeless face fixed on us with a horrible intensity. Novak and Rollins opened fire, but their bullets seemed to have no effect. With a swipe of its massive claws, the creature tore Novak apart, his blood splattering the cave walls, his organs spilling to the floor. Rollins and I ran, our hearts pounding, our lungs burning. We could hear the creature behind us, its roar echoing through the tunnels. Suddenly, Rollins stumbled, his foot caught in a crevice. I turned to help him, but it was too late. The creature was upon him, its jaws clamping down on his head with a sickening crunch. I ran, the creature's roar echoing in my ears. I could hear its heavy footsteps behind me, growing closer with every passing second. I fumbled with the C4 in my pack, my fingers slick with sweat. I reached a narrow crevice in the tunnel wall, just wide enough for me to squeeze through. I armed the C4 and tossed it behind me, diving through the gap just as the creature lunged. The explosion was deafening, the shockwave slamming into me like a physical blow. I felt myself being lifted off my feet, hurled through the air like a ragdoll. I slammed into the far wall of the tunnel, the breath driven from my lungs. For a moment, everything went black. When I came to, the tunnel was filled with dust and debris. I could hear the sound of rocks settling, the distant drip of water, and then silence. I dragged myself to my feet, every muscle screaming in protest. I stumbled through the tunnels, my mind numb with shock and grief. Finally, I emerged from the cave, blinking in the sudden brightness of daylight. I collapsed to my knees, my chest heaving with sobs. My team was gone, torn apart by that nightmare creature. I was the only one left, the sole survivor of a mission that had gone horribly wrong. But even as I knelt there, the sun warm on my face, I knew that the nightmare wasn't over. The creature was still out there, waiting in the darkness, and I knew that someday I would have to go back.